Yeah, there was another another shutdown of a live service game. Right? And within I don't know, when did when did this game come out? Like middle of the year? This is like almost Rumbleverse time. Right? It it it's only been a couple months, maybe six, seven months? Maybe? So X Defiant, a Ubisoft original. Our message to our players. Dear players. Hi, I'm not a player. I never I don't you should have put it on Steam. Anyway, thank you for your incredible dedication and support for, of X Defiant. We regret to inform you that we are in, initiating the sunsetting process today, December 3rd. As a result, new downloads, player registrations, and purchases will no longer be available. Season 3 will still launch, so stay tuned for more updates to come. The servers will remain active, and the game will be fully playable until June 3rd, 2025. Here is a personal message from our executive producer, Mark Rubin. This is on X. Um, you know, it happens. For those who purchase the Ultimate Founders Pack, you receive a full refund. Additionally, players who made VC and DLC purchases since... That game sucked. Let me finish. Um, purchases since November 3rd, 2024 also, will also be fully replended. Please note that the processing of these may take up to eight weeks. For more details on refunds, please continue our FAQ section. Why is it going to take eight weeks? What the fuck? <laughs> Understand that this news may come as a dis we understand that this news may come as a disappointment, and we deeply appreciate the time and passion you've invested in our community. Our goal is to provide you with all the information you need in one convenient place, while acknowledging that we may not have all the answers just yet. We are committed to keeping you informed and supported throughout this process. Thank you for your continued support and understanding. What does sunsetting mean? This is the only one that matters, really. Uh, sunsetting. Starting December 3rd, new players will not be able to purchase any content. Register for the game it will be disabled. Existing players that have accessed the game prior to, to December 3rd will continue to have full access to the game, including upcoming content until the servers go offline June 3rd, 2025. Uh, will I still be able to use my remaining X coins? Yes, you can still, you can still use your remaining X coins to redeem content in the game. Well, season three is still launched. I have the game uninstalled. Can I still reinstall to play season three? Yes, you can reinstall to play season three if you've accessed the game prior to December 3rd, 2024. So if you liked this game and you're sad that it's going away and you've had it on your computer before, you've been registered, you can play it again. That's good. Uh, downside, the game is shutting down. After the executive producer said, no, we have no plans to like shut down the game after season four. These were rumors. Uh, jokes on you guys. Uh, the game's not even making it to season four, motherfucker. Season three, and it's getting shut down. Nice, uh, av avoiding the arguments or avoiding the controversy. Because he said, "No, nah, we're not shutting down after season four." Because that was the allegations, that was the the rumors that were flying around. But uh, the game's not even making it to season four. Season three is where the game is ending, and it will be June third, twenty twenty five. So the game, I guess, had like a full year, which is cool, I guess, but. Very unfortunate, right? It's it's really sad to see more of these live service games just not give themselves enough time to cook and develop a player base and a payer base, right? Because that's really what you need, right? Most live service games, these games ain't lasting. Most live service games need years to be profitable. They don't come out and are just immediately profitable, especially in the market now with how big it is, uh, how, how much money it costs to develop a game. You're going to be in the red for a long time on these live service games. The same with the Epic Games Store, the Epic Games Launcher is still in the red. Something to think about, right? That is a launcher that has existed for five years. It's still in the red. And Ubisoft is a massive company, and they should have the money to continue to support the game, to try to get it to become profitable by changing the game and listening to the feedback from the community and working on things to make it better. But instead, they're sunsetting the game. Uh, I want to talk about the reasons why I think it's happening. I want to say that it's it's a really simple concept. They're bleeding money. Uh, the AAA video games industry, at least in the West, is kind of exploding imploding rather uh the amount of money they're spending on the games isn't making them enough money back and ubisoft is being hit probably the hardest when you think about this right they had to let go a lot of a lot of devs they've had to go, let go of a lot of their smaller studios or shut down a lot of their smaller studios so this game being a money sink just kind of in in this time just kind of makes it easier for them to chop off the, the legs of it you know just get rid of it pull the plug take it off live support Though the game had decent players, it maybe it didn't make enough money because of the fact that those players weren't paying enough, right? Um, my my big issues, low SSDs are a scam. Unfortunately, I have to use one, yeah. Um, my issue is they didn't give the game enough time to cook, and they pulled the same problem Rumbleverse pulled. Uh, the difference is 
X5 is owned by Ubisoft, right? So Ubisoft wants to put it on their Ubisoft Connect uh, launcher, but also not launching on Steam day and date, or at least, you know, three months later was a huge mistake, right? So many PC players, this is an unfortunate fact of life, and I'm beginning to realize it's happening more and more to me as well without, you know, Fortnite. I don't really like to use the Epic Games Store. I don't like to use any outside launchers that aren't something like GOG that, do, that isn't really a launcher. It's a storefront to buy games, and those games exist on your PC regardless of uh, GOG, right? Uh, I don't really want to use other launchers. I really don't want to use other storefronts. It's becoming more and more apparent that I'm turning into a normal PC player, and I just want the vast majority of my catalog to be on Steam or natively on my hardware. Now, not launching a game like this that is supposed to be a Call of Duty competitor and another multiplayer arena shooter in the same space as Call of Duty, if not an actual competitor, maybe it's supposed to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe but not try to take market share from it, not launching it on Steam when Call of Duty launches on Steam, even though there's also the Battle.net version, the, the Activision launcher version, seems a little tone deaf. And I say the same thing because I really felt as if one of the bigger issues with Rumbleverse, uh, rest in peace, Rumbleverse, I think it was a great game, but maybe it didn't have the same wide stream appeal as I thought it should have. It was an Epic Games Store exclusive because Epic Games owned the rights to the game. They, they bought the game or they bought the, the rights to distribute the game. So even though Iron Galaxy is not a subsidiary of Epic Games, they at that point had signed an exclusivity deal and locked themselves into only publishing the game on Epic Games, probably to get into the door of being able to get the game out there, but also kind of sealing their fate when you realize that the other big game on their launcher is a Battle Royale, and a Battle Royale that looks kind of similar to some people with its colorful, cartoony art style, and, well, it's a Battle Royale, people were already kind of getting sick of Battle Royales. I think if they had put it on Steam, it could have done a lot better. Maybe it would have had a bigger player base outside of just the console stuff. I think games need to appeal to Coomer incels. Otherwise, they won't be able to sell cosmetics. Yeah, I think that's what um, all of the gacha games do, right? They have like the they're just waifu simulators, and they make tons of money. I don't. I also, you don't have to do that specifically. You just have to be Fortnite. Just be Fortnite because Fortnite doesn't only appeal to Coomer incels. Yeah, they have Ice Spice and Mrs. Incredible, but they also have like five different M and M skins, and those all sell really well. And so do the Icon skins. Like, yeah, maybe you need, like, attractive-looking characters and skins. Don't be like Concord, but you also need to make sure that your game is going to be able to reach the most amount of players possible so you can convert the most amount of players into payers. x didn't do that. And it's for that reason why the game, I think, is being sunset so early. I've seen how Fortnite does fat asses. You can't fool me. Okay. Okay, Mean Buffalo. All right. All right, man. Let's sunset to Fortnite and play. The yeah, we can play some in a bit. I'm actually down to play some Fortnite. That's a good idea. So I have no I have no issues with X Defiant. I never played X Defiant because it wasn't on Steam and I didn't want to download the Ubisoft laundry. I'm gonna be real. So look, you guys lost out on a potential payer slash player because you didn't put the game on Steam. Uh, that's probably a lot of the reason why people didn't try the game. And hopefully that's a lesson for other developers looking to make some sort of a live service multiplayer focused game. It needs to be on the most popular platform on, on, on PC if you want it to do well on PC. Now, for console, I don't know what the numbers looked like. I don't know if it did well on console. I don't even know if it took any sort of market share from Call of Duty, even though Call of Duty is a paid fucking game. I, would hate, I hate to see games that people potentially like. Even if I didn't like the game, I hate to see... Battle Royales and live service games go away so soon before they can start to build a real player base and become and get in the black and become popular enough that they can make money because that's someone's favorite game, right? I, I don't care if you think X Defiant was the worst game to ever exist and it could never be better than Call of Duty and it was worse than Realm Royale and worse than Paladins and worse than I'm trying to think of uh, Radical Heights, right? I don't like that's your prerogative. You're allowed to think that, but just know that that's this is someone else's favorite game and it's being taken away from them forever after June 3rd, 2025. And that is really unfortunate because I want every gamer to be able to enjoy the video games that they like. Uh, thank goodness I still have Rumble Club.
right? Because if Rumble Club was gone and Rumbleverse was gone, I might just crash out. It might be over, right? I, so I still have like a cool, little funny, free-to-play live service battle royale looking punching thingy to do. That's significantly simpler, which means I can actually get more people to play it and it's on Steam. Just so I can get more people to play it with me. <laughs> but I hope to see more developers understand that that's a big deal when it comes to making sure your game is going to have mainstream appeal putting it on the most popular platform on steam hades for instance is not a live service game but i feel like a lot of people didn't know this especially people who are hades fans did you know that game existed before it was on steam its entire early access period was paid off by epic games so it's an epic games store exclusive before its 1.0 launch and then its 1.0 launch happened and it blew up on steam and had way more sales on steam than it ever had on epic games in a full year i think it was either a year or six months of epic game store exclusivity make sure it goes on the most popular platform if you want your game to potentially make some money just the thought anyways Tell me how you feel in the comment section down below about the X Defiant shutdown. Does it affect you? Does it affect some of your friends? Are you going to miss the game? Are you just sad to see another live service game go? That could have been something great. Do you not care at all? Leave it all in the comment section down below. Tell me about your favorite live service games that have been shut down, that have been sunsetted, that you'll never see again. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I put out content like once a week. I'm really lazy. Sorry. It will eventually will be more consistent once I actually hit 1,000 subscribers and can make a couple makes make a couple bucks on youtube then i'll probably put out more content daily so if you want to see more content tell all your friends to subscribe so i get to a thousand subscribers but anyways this is beanie thuggish for the youtubes talking about live service games being shut down once again signing out and saying